Hi, I'm Randy Cousteau, and this is The Felching of the Octopus, which is a fun-sized epic in anti-heroic couplets dedicated to the two rapscallions who challenged me to write it, uh, cephalopod fetishists everywhere, and a narrow subset of Japanese businessmen. Now then, most watery and slime-crusted muse, awaken from your dark aquatic snooze. You who have filled the poets' heads with things of submarine significance, tales of kings, like great Poseidon, god of waves and storm, all-encompassing Pontus from Gaia born, old man of the sea, primal Proteus, who wrestled the heroic Menelaus. The gods may be gone, the naiads dried up, but this tale is nectar for Zeus's cup, though some might say that this bit of lore is better fitted for the cuspidor. Inspire me, sweet muse, nevertheless, that this song may from pen and lips egress. Many creatures inhabit the great sea, from noble shark to humble anemone. But this is the epic of the octopus, her lover, trumpetfish maculatus, and the unlikely affair that transpired, but till now has ne'er been set to lyre. Madam Octopus was weeping in the sea, when Trumpetfish came swimming merrily. Oh, what causes thy sorrow, dear lady, cried Trumpetfish. What could be so weighty to make one lovely and long-armed as you cry tears of delightful and viscous goo? Have you not a love to please you with woo? No, tis impossible, methinks, that one fairer than any beast of sea or sun could be without a fleet of admirers eager to fill her oceanic desires. So tell me, lovely and many-armed maid, how can I make your darkling sorrows fade? Up, Madam Octopus raised her briny eyes. So fine, thought he, with neither guile nor guise and spoke the following words through her tears. Kind Maculatus, your sympathies are sweet, though empty to a cephalopod in heat. A lady has needs, as I think you know, but alack, nature brings me naught but woe. For should I find a beloved eight-armed mate, he may please, but shall leave me impregnate. Caring for octopus eggs is a trial that can only end in a fate most vile, for female octopi typically die after they have severed the maternal tie. Oh, trumpet fish, what a price to be paid for only wanting love and to get laid. Now, Madam's monologue drove trumpet fish into frenzy, as she was quite a dish. Dearest Madam, great siren of the sea, I, trumpet fish, can end your misery, for I am not cephalopod, but fish the great Ostomus Maculatus. Hence, you needn't fear intercourse with me. We share no reproductive similarity. What say you, my lovely Madam Octopus, to a role with Master Maculatus? Madam Octopus's tears dried straight away. Oh, how long have I waited for this day, she cried with writhing passionate mirth, to make love without fear of giving birth. Please take me, sweet savior, and do it quick. Don't make me beg for your salty fish stick. Trumpet fish did not need to be told twice, making it with an octopus, but hot spice. Ready or not, my darling, here I come. Prepare yourself to be struck blind and dumb. Madam spread her tentacles nice and wide, eager to embrace this shift in fortune's tide. Trumpet fish, ever randy and limber, leered and drew forth his stiff, fishy member. Then, in the midst of erotic madness, Maculatus made this shocking bequest. O oh, octopus, I'll grant you my very soul, if you let me penetrate your ink hole. With a blush and nod, Madam consented, and showed her abyss from which ink vented. Her lover inserted his brackish prick in the oozy place some might find it sick, but not that kinky creature, trumpet fish. He found the ink hole to be quite delish. Warm and succulent, smooth, greasy, and deep. He specially loved the way loose ink would seep and lugervate his aggravated dog, which had long ago grown quite stiff and long. 
But what of Madame? She felt none at all, for, by octopus standards, he was quite small. So, unthinkingly, she committed sin by asking the worst question, Is it in? Luckily, Maculatus did not hear her as he plundered that spot which grows no fur. Afore long he shouted, By Poseidon, madam, here I come! There, there, I am done! Upon which he became quite soft, as he had filled her with his tartar sauce. Maculatus sighed and lit a cigarette, blew rings, and said, You're the best I've had yet. Madam, needless to say, was full of rage. Still unsatisfied, she craved love's full wage. Oh, trumpet fish, trumpet fish, she thundered. My heart you have fooled, my whole you have plundered, and yet you have not pleasured me at all. I ought to make you into soup, fish ball. Furthermore, in your lascivious greed, you filled me with your slippery sushi seed. I think that the punishment ought to fit the crime that your carelessness did commit. Here, then, is my vengeful yet righteous decree. With your snout, you must draw out your sperm, see? While at the same time with your tongue, please me. Mr. Maculatus was slightly nonplussed, yet still tried to give his ego a boost. With these proud words, born of vanity great, he made an appeal to his angry mate. Though I may not have eight impressive limbs, of my remarkable snout, sea folk have writ hymns. Though I may not boast an impressive hose, I please ladies with only lips and nose. Of my sincerity, dear, do not doubt. Oh, madam, I would love to eat you out. The sensual cephalopod grinned wide, again offered her ink hole for a ride. The trumpet fish went to work right away, pressed his mighty lips to her murky bay, and heroically began to repay his amorous debt, drawing out his seed, sparkling, salty, and white, bead by bead. The octopus strength straddled his lengthy muzzle, squeezed it tight so her insides he nuzzled. Oh, what a mighty manly proboscis, she cried, tickle me with its low, slow kiss. Madame squirmed in aquatic ecstasy as the fish ate her oily ink pussy. Heart of fire, her passion could not be quelched. Such is the pleasure of being well felched. Shortly, her bowels started to rumble, tickled to madness by the fish humbled. His skillful, scratchy tongue wrought forth from her a mighty, momentous octopus purr. With a piercing shriek, she evacuated a blackish cloud. The octopus was sated. Trumpet fish knew that his job was well done, now that he was smothered in octopus stuff. Oh, trumpet fish, trumpet fish, what to do with what remains love's inky residue? Never mind. Our lovers are quite content. Who cares if their methods seem a bit bent? So gods, sea folk, and men, bless them alike. Mermaids, sharks, dolphins, tuna fish, and pike. Remember this inspired tale of love that transpired in the sea's coral cove. Tell it, whether in ocean, reed, or rush, our epic, the felching of the octopus.